Finally, I get to review this guy. Even though Longinus wasn't the biggest request, I only got maybe a couple people asking to make it, let's be honest, I just had to make a Longinus. And I'd say this is probably one of my more unique Beyblades I've made, so let's get right into it. The Lair. So the Lair is called Legion Longinus, if you saw the title you'd already know that, but um, this Beyblade is actually very similar to the um, basic shape of LEGO Base's LEGO Spriggan. If we just take it apart or take this little centerpiece off, we can see the center has a very similar bracket shape with kind of a 2x1x2x3 by 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 shape? I don't know. Now obviously the entire shape of it is also based off of Rage Longinus with the upper attack and all, which this is the main um, thing with this Beyblade. It has a very unique style of upper attack. Now usually what people do with an upper attack in LEGO is they'll do one of two things. They either angle a contact point, like they take normal contact point and angle it, or they'll add slopes on top of a contact point that's very low, maybe like this somehow. But here's the thing with those. With the angled contact point, it's just what it is, an angled contact point. Like for example, would you consider uh, Bellfire or Belial to have upper attack because it has an angled contact point? No, you don't. It's just an angled contact point. It's stupid. And once again, with the contact point with slopes on top of it, again, it's just a little decoration. It's not anything too, too crazy. So, what I wanted to do is create an upper attack that looks like one and also acts like one. And I think I've done that pretty successfully. And I think I did that pretty simply too with these pieces being stuck at the sides, you can add slopes on one side and the upper attack slope on the other side so you can get that proper angle that you want. Now this might seem kind of fragile, but I've tested it, it really isn't. Tape does help, but I'm pretty sure you can um, totally battle it without tape or whatever. Uh, it should be fine. Really everything I have to say about the layer, so let's move on to the chassis. The chassis. Are you really that surprised? Probably not. So, 3A, what do I say about it? It's built very similarly, I guess, to the layer, at least with the upper portion. It's just shifted one stud so it can actually extend out, and when you put it onto the layer like that, you can see that it creates this extremely steep slope that is very effective for um, lifting other Beyblades up. I've done tests with this thing. I saw it fling Fafnir into the air. It was insane. Um, but, of course, this is LEGO. You can also angle it like this, but if you do this, then I'm pretty sure this is punishable um, by uh, death. No. Anyway, let's just move on to the driver now. The driver. So the driver is called Turbine because it uses this turbine piece, and it's a um, wide, flat circle. Pretty standard. Um, usually people would make, like, Destroy or something similar to Destroy, um, but that's kind of boring. This is also kind of like Destroy, but it is extremely short, and it has a much wider, um, ring than, uh, Destroy. And, um, it can do some pretty funny mo movements around the stadium. So, um, yeah, that's it for the Beyblade. Now let's go on to the test battles, the thing that everyone skips to. Almost forgot about the weight, so let's weigh all the parts individually now. So the layer is about 14 grams, that's like, okay. The chassis is uh, 12, okay, that's also pretty average. The driver, you know, like, wait, I thought I, thought I saw it, it was like 2 grams, but it's like less than 1 gram, so it doesn't really matter that much. So the overall weight is 29 grams, that's almost 30, kind of cringe, but... Um, it's heavier than Hyperion, at least, and also, one more thing, I was gonna add metal, but I'm dumb, and I forgot to get it. Oops, I'll get it later, doesn't matter right now, now let's get to the test battles. So, of course, let's start with the test spin. So, it does move pretty fast along the ridge of the stadium, and it's also on the ridge of the, uh, turbine driver, so, decently fast. Also, I have this weird stick launcher that works surprisingly well. Anyways, let's start the test battles, and we're gonna start off with Hyperion. Decent 
hits. Ooh, I think either Longinus barely won that one or it was a tie. It's in the center, but I kind of want to see how well it does. Come on, let's go. Looks like it can spin steel well, or I'm sorry. Spin equalize. Next up, let's do Sage Spriggan. Oh my gosh. Wow, it just got killed instantly. That's crazy. It's hard to rush launch with this one because it is it's kinda like the ripcord's going in the stadium. So, I guess Spriggan wins this grudge match. Yeah, that's too fast. Yeah, yeah, this kills it, because this thing sucks in the same spin. Yeah, it just gets absolutely destroyed. That was kind of a snipe, but still, that was cool. Oh wow, it actually managed to, um, remove some of the putty. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. Well, that's kind of a weak one, but I feel like it might be able to win this. Oh, no, so close though. very well. Probably my fault, but... Oh my god, the dragon went... Alright, no, it's just the dragon is just that good. Okay, so, final thoughts on this thing. Unfortunately, it is not the dragon counter. Um, but, it seems like it can do decently well in opposite spin. I'll have to do more testings, but... Um, in same spin, um, besides Fafner, it does struggle, but um, not that bad. I feel like it has um, decent potential overall, but um, yeah, that's going to do it for the video. So, comment, like, and subscribe.